Hey everybody, it's Derek Colmartin from CodeOpinion.com. Distributed tracing can be great to observe how a request flows through a set of distributed services. However, it can actually be used kind of as a band-aid to mask a problem that you might not actually need to have. Let me explain how it works as well as illustrate it in action with a demo. I wanna thank Solace for sponsoring this video. Solus provides a complete event streaming and management platform that makes it easier to design, deploy, and manage event-driven architecture across hybrid, multi-cloud, and IoT environments. For more on Solus, check out the link in the description. So why do you need distributed tracing? Well, you don't necessarily need it if you're working in a typical monolith where everything's deployed as a single unit, so a single process. That means when our client makes a request to our application for interacting with a database, a cache, et cetera, we have the complete visibility of that request from the client because it's held all within that single application, that single process. But if you don't have a single process and you kind of have this system that's decomposed into multiple different services, you really don't have any visibility. If you're looking at an actual end-to-end -end request, how do you see that a request goes from point A to point B to point C, et cetera? So as an example of that, let's say we have our initial request from our client that goes to service A. And service A reaches out to its database. And then service A, we know from there, it's calling service B. And maybe service B is making an external call. If we're just thinking in the context of service A, we know we're calling service B, but we don't know that it's making an external call beyond that outside of its own service boundary. So then let's continue on now where we have service A, we know that we're gonna call service uh, C, and yes, we expect it's gonna do something internally within its service boundary, but do we know that service C is actually also gonna call service D and it makes a call to its database and then we finally go all the way back up from service A to return to the client. In this type of an environment, we have actually no visibility into how all these calls are made from service to service. So with distributed tracing, we can visualize and see how a request, an initial request that flows through our system. To illustrate this, we have our client, and this is kind of over time, and because all of this was done with doing blocking synchronous requests, this means that our client, when it had called service A, service A took the exact length of time that it took to return to the client, but it also made this database request. Once that was done, it kind of procedurally then called service B, which service B then had to make that external call. Once that was done, we returned back to service A so that it could then, at that point, make the call to service C. And service C called its database, but service C also called, after its database call, made a call to service D. Service D here, maybe it took a long time to interact with its database, and once it returned, it flowed all the way up, and that's why we have service A, which is the entire span of this time that it took from the client, because all this was synchronous blocking calls. So it's great that distributed tracing can kind of give us this insight to see how our system's working and how a request flows through all these different services. But the problem is, like I mentioned at the very beginning, is that to me, distributed tracing in this case is a band-aid, it's a masking, or maybe not masking, it's actually showing you that you have all of this temporal coupling. That means that everything needs to be online and available. So if we have our client make a request to service A, we go through this flow again, when we hit service C and service C calls the needs to call service D and it's unavailable, now we have to deal with this everywhere. If we were making state changes, because this was a command from service C or service B was making state changes, how do we roll all that back? We don't have a distributed transaction. All of this temporal coupling is the problem. Distributed tracing sure can help us visualize that all of this is going on. But you don't want distributed tracing just because you have these problems. You want to get rid of the temporal coupling. So that's not to say that blocking synchronous calls are bad. You're going to be doing them, especially when you're trying to do some type of query or some type of UI composition. As an example, whether you have a backend for front end BFF or you're, whether you're doing this kind of composition directly in your client, there's different ways to do this. Ultimately, you need to compose data from multiple services, but services aren't calling other services. They're independent. They have all the data that they need. You just need to compose that somewhere. So when we have our client, for example, if it's calling a uh, backend for a front end, it's calling each individual service. Each individual service may be calling something within its local or its logical boundary, but we know that service A isn't calling service B. When our backend for front end calls a service, 
it can deal with that individual failure and however it wants to do with that for the composition. But we don't have to worry about service A or even having to be aware. When we know when we call service A, it's doing something within its log logical boundary. It's not calling service B. It's not calling service C. We don't have this tangled web of synchronous calls from service to service to service. So in this case, distributed tracing is actually great because it gives us visualization to see when those requests are made to each service and what they are actually doing. So we can see potentially some bottlenecks. When our client requests that BFF, it could potentially call each service concurrently so that it can compose everything together at the end. It doesn't need to be one at a time. So it calls service A, service A is calling its database. At the exact same time, it's calling service B. Service B was doing something external. And then at the same time, it was calling service C, which it is getting data from its database. As long as the longest one took, which is service B at this point, that's when it's gonna compose everything and return it back to our client. So in this case, yes, distributed tracing is exactly what it's intended purpose for, is to be able to see that request and how it flows. Now, if we wanna remove temporal coupling, especially from long running business processes and workflows, distributed tracing is great because we can see that entire workflow, that entire business process, and how it spans and interacts with different services and when they're actually uh, performing the work that they need to. So from here, what this looks like is when our client makes a request to service A, it does something with its database. From there, it can create a message to our send it to our broker, and then we can just return to our client. We're done at that point, that interaction, that blocking call is done. From there, service B um, can pick up that message, do what it needs to do, say it needs to call some external service, some third party. And then what it can do, it can reply, send a message back to the broker which then service A can pick that message up. And from there, this is kind of like orchestration because now service A needs knows that, oh, I need to call service C. So it can send a message to the broker that service C, some type of command that service C is gonna pick up, do the work that it needs to do, say it's interacting with its database. And then again, it can send a reply message back to the broker, which service A can pick up, and then realize, okay, my entire workflow, this business process is done, I'm marking it as done, and then we're complete. We've done all of this asynchronously. We removed the temporal coupling. Each service is working independently. We weren't blocking the client. We don't have to necessarily worry about kind of the synchronous, if there's a failure, how do we roll back? We're doing all of this by kind of loosely coupling with messaging. But distributed tracing is still really important because we want to see that entire workflow. So what that looks like is now we have our client making that initial call, service A is interacting with the database and sending that message to our message broker. And from there, we may have a span of time here where nothing occurs. And that's because our message is just sitting in the queue and service B hasn't picked it up yet. Once it does, it does its work. It sent that reply and then service A picked it up. It sent the message to for service C to consume, service C does it, does it work with its database, replies, service A picks it up, and then marks our, our process complete in its database. But you can see this looks very, very different from how I was making that synchronous call initially. So before I jump into some source code and a demo, I wanna say thank you to all the developer level members on YouTube and Patreon. I really, really do appreciate your support. They'll get access to the source code I'm about to show, as well as a private Discord server where you can interact with other members and talk about software architecture and design. If you want more info, check out the links in the description. So to illustrate this, I have a solution here that has four different projects. There's billing, sales, shipping, and ASP.NET Core. What I'm showing you right now is ASP.NET Core where I'm using OpenTelemetry to do this distributed tracing. There's a couple of things I'm doing is I'm also gonna be using Zipkin as a way to visualize this. So there's an exporter for all our open telemetry data that we're building up here. I'm also using an service bus because I'm gonna be illustrating this using uh, asynchronous messaging. We're also using our HTTP client instrumentation so we can see when one of these service services makes an external HTTP call, as well as we're getting instrumentation for all of ASP.NET Core for that incoming route from our initial HTTP request. So these are all five different processes, five different executables that are actually are running. So I'm gonna jump through, and this is exactly how I illustrated it kind of in my diagram, is the first thing we're gonna have to do here is we're gonna have a route that's executed to, this is basically service one, is sales. What it's gonna do is place an order. 
When we place our order, we're going to interact with our database, and then we're going to fire off an order placed event. We're going to publish that to our broker. So from there, what we also have within the same logical boundary is we kind of have this orchestration where once that kind of is going to kick off our workflow. So we're going to handle that order placed event. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to then send a new message called bill order. Bill order is going to be handled by the billing uh, executable, this separate process, this separate project here. And let's pretend it does some work. And once it's done that, it's going to do a reply back to our orchestration and sales there to tell it, okay, this order was billed. So from here, if we jump back over, once order build happens, we can then call, um, send a message called create shipping label that's going to be handled by the shipping boundary, that separate service over here. So from there, if we look over at the shipping label, I have HTTP client where I'm building one up and I'm just making some bogus call to fedex.com, which kind of illustrates we are making some external HTTP call. And then the same type of thing, we're going to be replying with a shipping label created. So if we jump back, once our shipping label has been created, we can then send another message to our cells, essentially saying that we're ready to ship the order and we can mark kind of this whole process as complete. So I'm going to run this and then I'm going to show you what this all looks like in Zipkin. All right, so everything's running. Let's fire off a request to kick this whole thing off. So this is my first breakpoint in ASP.NET, our controller. We're going to send our place order. From there, now I'm in my handler for placing order where I'm going to be making some database changes as well as then sending off that event. So now we're in our orchestration where we're handling that. We're going to send our bill order command. Now we're on the billing side, a completely separate process where we're going to send back our order build reply via the message broker. Now we're back in sales. We're going to send the create shipping label. So now we're on the sales side. I'm going to make our HTTP request to FedEx as well as send our shipping label created reply. FedEx.com, this request takes a little bit of time for it to fail. Now we've hit back, we finally sent it. Now we've got our shipping label created and we can send our ready to ship order and then mark this process as complete. So that was everything. Now I'm in Zipkin and this is the entire trace that spans all the different services and all the different interactions. So we can see we started off with ASP.NET Core, it handled that request, it then sent a, our place order to our queue, and we can see that right here. From there, sales then picked that up asynchronously, completely separately, and to process that message. It dealt with uh, interactions with its own database, and then published that event, the order placed. Again, now asynchronously, we're picking that up in sales and kind of starting that workflow, that orchestration, where we're sending our bill order, billing's picking that up asynchronously, sending the reply, sales is picking up the reply, sending our create shipping label to shipping, shipping's picking that up asynchronously, making the call to FedEx, which took a very long time, sends the reply, and then sales picks that back up. Now again, this is great because we get to see this entire workflow but it was all done asynchronously where each service was picking up messages and sending them back to the queue. And we weren't uh, reliant and temporarily coupled that every service needed to be available at the exact same time. But distributed tracing, again, is great because we can see this entire workflow. So as you can see, distributed tracing is great for seeing these workflows and long running business processes, as well as if you're doing kind of UI composition where you have these synchronous calls to different services, we're kind of building up what you're returning to the client. You can see kind of the latency and what services potentially are taking a very long time of any part of a composition type of request. But don't use this as a crutch because you're making all these synchronous blocking calls and you have all this temporal coupling that is a nightmare to manage and you're trying to manage it so you can visualize it. If anything, kind of use this distributed tracing and visualization to realize that all the temporal coupling that you do have so you can get out of it. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.